greatest in records, Sue Randy's at 17 North Parade. Also, auto decorations, radios, record changers, plus 1,000 odd items. Come and see us. Randy's at 17 North Parade. Telephone 2 4859. We're open till 7 every night. We're here with a man that needs no introduction. Probably played on like over a million Jamaican <laughs> records, working on the million and first right now. Mr. Sly Dunbar, um, could you tell us or give us a quick introduction on how you got your start in the music business and when you first started drumming? Yeah, I, I, I got my start while going to attending school, Trinidad Conference by school. You know, just coming home to even listen to records and going to the jukebox and punching records. And there was a program in Jamaica called Jamaica Bandstand, which we watched the drummers play. And I figured more or less I said I want to be a drummer. So I told my mother at Atrium, said I didn't want to go back to school, I wanted to do music. So I said, okay. And Light Parks used this thing as a term, I used to come by. Oh, we had a big tape recorder. So we actually could record ourselves at that time and play back. So I was stopping on some fat and we could actually hear it, but keeping the tempo and you know, like to come and sing a couple of songs and start recording. So we started actually recording from early, early, early. And then, you know, start playing a band called Yard Booms, the little one show, and then went down by R.H. Invincible and was doing like, there was this drummer named Tin Leg who was the baddest drummer in Jamaica. And he had to go somewhere, so he left. So Answer said, must play and start playing. Answer said, well, I like we play. And next thing you know, Answer called a session for me to do Night Doctor. And that's like the first song I played. And then down in the year later, when he called back on the session, and the next song was Double Barrel, which was a million sellers. So I think this is where everything starts. We have to big up to the great Answer Collins, you know. Up the I don't remember exactly when the first home was, you know, that we used to hear a lot about Randy's and Randy's coming like it was like the office for all musicians. We have to go there and check in and this place is called Aglas Rest. So if nobody don't know you don't know, you can't get no session. So you have to go and punch in that clock everybody see every day and you, you go there from like nine o'clock and you stay there until seven o'clock when the store lock and catch a bus and go and go to another studio and things like that. But Randy's studio was one of the studios where I start experimenting like with certain tom toms effect like a song by Jaw White called Dread Out there eh? which was there and then we, we did before that thing we did Air and Baby for Dick Wong and we tested the sound and realized it it was there and then we did Peter Touch Equal Rights album there but you know we had a good one and I, I had a, actually sang a, did a song for Clive <laughs> my friend named Bobby <laughs> you know and you know do a lot of session at Randy's Randy was a top student and if you're not recording at Randy's you're not recording at all, you know? 